All right, and good afternoon. It's Tuesday. Welcome back to episode two of the Daring Banjo Masterclass um, with our good friend Jens Kruger, uh, who I'm going to bring in in just a second, and we are going to explore, or rather Jens is going to take you on a journey um, of uh, banjo tunings. Um, lots of things that you can do and try at home and uh, guiding you through different chord positions uh, within each tuning. And I know Jens, like I think I do, then probably a little bit of history thrown into it as well. Um, so get ready for that. Before we bring him in, though, I did want to just say a huge thank you to everybody for your really, really positive feedback on this particular series. Um, if this is your first one, we did about five or six in the early stages of the pandemic uh, with Jens. Um, took a little break and we just did the first one back uh, about a month ago now. Um, uh, on backup and, and concepts for different backups and that kind of thing. And today we're going to go into tunings. So I do urge you to go to daringbanjos.com. Um, there is a lifestyle tab at the top where you can look at all the Daring Live episodes, but there's a dedicated area for all the previous uh, Masterclass episodes as well. So go check them out when you have time. Um, I think it's one of those things where everybody can take something away, uh, and that's kind of the brilliance of it. But in the meantime, let's get on with this particular episode, and let's bring in Mr. Jens. Well, hello, hello everybody. Sir. Hello. <laughs> hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing really well. I'm in the studio. I'm having a <clears throat> great time, you know, um, uh, preparing for this little lesson. And uh, just it's just wonderful. Awesome. Now you have your San Pellegrino at the ready. Do you have coffee? Are we good? I have coffee. I have coffee awesome. right here. Salute. In my, in my favorite cup. Salute. All right. Well, I'm going to leave you guys to it. And um, as always, if you have any questions, drop us a line in the chat. Um, and we'll answer it at the uh, towards the end of the show here. Well, we're gonna go for about a half hour, I think, you know, and then we start not having bad. some some questions and stuff. Is that all, is that Absolutely. about right? And Thirty forty I, minutes is fine. Yeah. Yeah, and if I if I if I get carried away, stop me. <laughs> I'll be waving frantically on the side. <laughs> like, ah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, okay. All right. <laughs> all, right. all right, guys. Well, Jens, over to you, man, friend. Thank you as always for being here, and uh, uh, let's enjoy this uh, this this episode. All right. Um, Hello, everybody. This is this is great because uh, tuning uh, banjo and tuning is like an oxymoron. It's hard enough to get this thing in tune uh, by itself anyway, uh, because th th there's so many overtones on the banjo, you know, usually uh, more than on other instruments, you know, it seems um, that you have uh, just sometimes a hard time getting getting the banjo in tune in general. But we don't want to talk about that. The general tuning, you know, that we have today is a G tuning that we that we usually start out with today. But it didn't used to be that way um, about a hundred years ago. You know, a lot of banjo instruction books, and I have a few of the old banjo instruction books. They were either you know tuned. The whole banjo was tuned down, and. Uh, uh, and also, in addition to that, they would have a banjo tuning. It would be like a C tuning, you know, that you find in the Scruggs book. So uh, you have a G, and then you have the, the C tuned down just to a C. And that that is, uh, uh, that is, that is called C tuning in the Scruggs book. Um, when 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 I first you know started playing the banjo, I wondered how would Earl Scruggs you know do the old folks. Is <laughs> and it's a great tuning because you know you have this low C, and when you play in the key of C, you you have this sort of low fundamental note. And um, by the way, when you when you tune a banjo, the problem is. Uh, today's banjos, or let's say in my case, my head is not, this head is not as tight as um, uh, banjo players used to keep the head in, let's say, the 60s or even the 70s, you know, 50s. They tried to crank the head up as tight as possible. Well, it had an advantage um, uh, for tuning because when you, when you tune the banjo, when you tune a string lower, you have less tension on the entire on, on the strings and so the bridge actually starts to move up a little bit and puts the strings a little bit more out of tune than when the banjo head is really tight and so uh, that's why you have to sort of you know retune a little bit more than they used to in the older days I think but this this tuning is really great because uh, uh, you you have uh, chords you know that you can, uh, that you can do uh, you don't have to do the big stretches because you can play them up. Let's say you have an F, you know, an F, an F chord here. Um, 
Well, of course, that will be more difficult to play because now this, this note is too low, you would have to play it here. But the F chord would be, you know, in this case here, you can use this F here. And this, this, this is interesting, you know, when you look at old uh, chord books, and I remember when I was uh, uh, playing tenor banjo, I ordered a chord chart book from uh, a music store, and uh, then I, I played tenor, and then, of course, I got a plectrum, you know, I didn't know the difference. And all the, the, the chords were, 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 these, were these chords, you know, out of, this, out of the, the, the C tuning. And of course, you know, you can hear a lot of the, uh, uh, a few Scruggs things. Um, <laughs> so you can see this D here and then the D, D sharp here. So, so of course, um, <clears throat> that was an old uh, Bob Wills tune, you know, um, uh, the Farewell Blues, and it, and it wasn't a, 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 a Earl Scruggs changed the chords a little, you know, it was actually a diminished chord, but it, that's how he played it. Uh, so the C tuning is a very handy tuning also when you have a uh, maybe another uh, um, uh, problem, let's say when, when I play the Bach cello suite. <laughs> There's a, there's a passage where it, even it's in G, uh, I need I have I need a, a low C, so I play the entire thing in the key of G, but I tune the 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 uh, the, e the D string down to C. But any, anyway, that's that's one of the first tunings you know that you change when you're uh, playing when when you're playing bluegrass. One of the, the great tunings, you know, that I use all the time is just putting the fifth string on A. And that's what I use when I play in the key of D. I just put that fifth string. It's not really a different tuning, but I just use the, the fifth string here. That makes it a lot easier to play in the key of D. All right, and now, uh, just on a on a note, the, the different tunings on a banjo are really just there to make things easier on your hands or make things even just possible. Um, so they, the banjo gets retuned, you know, a lot more than probably any other string instrument that I know of. Um, now, the uh, uh, the tuning that we uh, you know the next tuning that is very prominent is the D tuning, where you take the uh, the B string and you tune it down to A, and the the G tuning the G to an F sharp, and now you have two options with the fifth string. Either you also tune it down to F sharp, or you put the the spike before, like I said, on D. You can put the spike on on onto onto A. This is the third of the D, you know, the F sharp. And you can really hear this is this is really used for. Things like that, the, the, just this D tunings, you know, that you find in the in the Scruggs book. But I want to give you a nice um, hint of how you can actually get around this tuning uh, a little bit easier. When you look at now the tuning, you know, when you when you tune the banjo, you know, you sometimes do that by doubling the string, you know, by by checking the string. Uh, with the lower string, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So now here, the middle three strings, the second, the third, and the fourth, they are the same relation, like in G tuning. So, but just in D. 
So this would be like, this is the D, and then you have this A, uh, this, this, this F sharp, and then this A. Uh, so now, when you think, when you, when you just would ignore the first string and the fifth string, and act, take these three strings, and just think of them as the first three string in G tuning. Like this would be a C chord, right? This here. But I don't have this, I don't have the low string. Now I'm just playing. And then this is the D7. You see the D7 would be here. And now you just move it, just move the string lower. And of course it becomes an A7. See, instead of a D chord here, you can use the same shape, and I'm talking about the shapes. Now you're just in the key of D. And there's a G chord here. Then, then. And so when you when you look at Foggy Mountain Breakdown in G tuning or like this lick, dong dong dong. Now you just play the load lower. See that makes that sense? Does it make sense? So this tuning is a lot is a lot easier when you understand that the relation of these three strings is just like G, but just put down in the, into the middle. I don't know if it helps you, but it helped me it helped me a great deal to understand the tuning. And then you just try to find, you know, things for the first string to do. <laughs> Is difficult to achieve you know on stage you know while you're playing with a band and that's why it has lost some of its uh, uses you know over the years because the really the whole band just sort of gets into a different sort of uh, it stretches out you know in a different way if you have Scruggs tuners you know these these adjustable tuners that you can use um, Earl Scruggs or you know other people would just prepare the detuning and just tune tune the strings, you know, down, and they're already in the detuning, just have to adjust the fifth string, and here they are. All right, so that detuning is great to play around and just explore little things. I like... It's cool. And it's basically the same like the seven chord that you would play on the, on the on the G, just lower. You know, here would be G, and here's the. And because the root is also this low D, it just gives it this growly growly sound. All right. Um, Oh, forgot. So let's say I, I'm going to put the fifth string to A. Now I've got an A up here. This, this now it doesn't have the sound of this third constantly. And the third is a very strong... Uh, flavor in a in a chord so if you have the, the the fifth the a it's a little bit more you know it's a little bit more open sounding so for some application it really sounds great see it sounds a little bit more open So that can be that can be a good sound. Now 
uh, what now you can do, you lower the third, you know, this, this F sharp and just lower it and half step. And what happens now is you're going to get a D minor because that's the third. So Jens, can I, can I ask a quick question? Yes, please. Just, just to jump in, um, cause I'm curious and I'm sure many other people are as well. As you go through the different tunings, can you play the strings out and name them so that people can pick up on, on what you're tuning each one to? Okay, so this that is a D, so. this is a D now. The first is a D, the second is an A, the third one is an F, and the fourth is a D, and the fifth is an A. So that gives it a D minor, D minor chord. D A F D A, and that's probably the only tune I really know that's been recorded. I mean. A very prominent tune would be Nashville Blues by Earl Scruggs, you see. Yeah, it sounds, sounds really good. What, what I always liked about the different tunings is that it makes the banjo fresh again. It gives me a different sound and I cannot play the things I already know. And it opens just new sounds and new possibilities. So even if I don't end up using it, I sometimes just like to put the banjo in a different tuning. So I explore, you know, I just listen. I don't... Uh, think too much what the notes are I just listen listen to them and try to figure figure something out but d minor is a, is a very cool tuning you know Find things. All right, I think that that covers that covers this D tuning. Um, I'm going to go back to G tuning now, so we have a, a reference to to where we're uh, going to go from there. So uh, we looked at in the Scruggs book again. Uh, you find a tuning. It's called modal, and the modal tuning is modal because it is not major or minor. It is modal, and it's actually an eleven, which means it's the it's the sharp uh, three. And also, you could maybe call it a suspended chord, like this. Now, this is a, a, a this is a tuning that actually is used very much in old time music when you when you listen to tunes like uh, bluesy tunes so you're playing the key of g so it's so it's d c it's up half step to c g d and a g again uh, of some rattle here uh, So for for Clawhammer, you can hear now. Now I, I have a bluesy, so I can play here, and then the second string just open, which when I play blues and the the tuning is in G. You see, that's not really the note you want. You didn't want that C, but in the tuning. With C, it's already there. So, and then, over here.
course you can pick that you know you just play it as bluegrass and it just makes the blues down here a little bit more easy um, i don't use it that much as modal because if i have you know sort of you know bluesy licks going up the neck the second string always throws me off because it's retuned so i'd rather down here just put the index finger on the c and work out of that position and then i move up <laughs> This works great, you know, so but when I'm in the key of G and I play the same thing. You see, I always have to put my index in. And you can see now I'm using something up the neck and I don't have to uh, constantly adjust because I have a different tuning. But the modal tuning is still something that's in the Scruggs book and that's the use for it usually. Uh, some, because sounding a little bit more um, bluesy maybe. And I think in Scruggs book, I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think it's used for pretty poly maybe or something like that. Um, so here, um, let's move this B up to C again. <laughs> No, well, before we do that, I have something better. I have to keep to my to my notes. Uh, here's G. Just D, B, G, D, G. Just a regular G tuning. And now, uh, there was a, in the, especially in the 70s, uh, a G minor tuning was very prominent. Uh, 70s, 80s. Now today, even today, it's not that not not much used anymore. But it's a great tuning. You might have not tried much, and it's fantastic. So you just tune that B string a half step down, and as we know, you know from our uh, music theory that the third, if you lower the third in the chord, you get a minor chord, right? So um, when you look at the G chord here, this is an open G chord, the D, the B the G, the D, and the G. So the only third we got is the second string. So now if we tune the second string a half step down, it makes this whole tuning a G minor tuning. So this B string now is a B flat. Now there's a few funny things like a, you can try just playing the regular stuff you play and then you sort of get into trouble. <laughs> Ben Eldridge of the Seldom Scene, he used this for a tune called Appalachian Rain. Um, Carl Jackson would use it to play actually on the second fret. He would use that tuning, put it on, on the second fret and make it A minor. And he would play... Use it to play Jerusalem Ridge. And a fantastic version. And it sounded great because it's like a melodic... And the first tune I have ever learned, you know, from uh, uh, in this tuning was a tune by Ricky Skaggs. It was called Irish Spring, like the soap. <laughs> and uh, on the album Remembrance and Forecasts, uh, they had this tune and James Bailey played the banjo. And... Uh, But the first tune that might be even be recorded with with this was uh, a Bill Monroe's Kentucky Mandolin. You know, like a... Something like that. And 
I don't know. Is, is was it Rudy Lee maybe who recorded it uh, on this tuning? But you can try also to play these uh, uh, um, melodic. <laughs> I came up with some double stops for it, like the... Or once I, I visited um, a first quality banjo, uh, Bill Sullivan. Um, and he said, can you play um, um, Ghost Riders? So, so I tried. See, that's, that's a fantastic sound. The sun, wow, the sun is moving towards my eyes. <laughs> is it still okay, Jamie? It's still, it's still looking okay? It looks fantastic. You're, you're a little sunny over there, but um, I, think we're, yeah. I think we get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, good. But you see, so that G minor tuning is really something to explore. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You just drop that uh, string down and then just try, you know, just try experimenting. <laughs> That's that's really a cool tuning, and uh, so back to G. Now we're going up to uh, to my favorite altered tuning, you know, that I use all the time, and that's the double C tuning. I tuned the B string up to C again, like in modal. And now the 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 D string. I tune it down to C as well. And now I have two, uh, two C's. And that gives it the name, double C. like this tuning I'm gonna stay with this tuning for a little bit I discovered it from a friend you know uh, Freddie Zemp was his name um, passed away a number of years ago and he taught me clawhammer banjo when I was in Switzerland he he knew a lot of clawhammer tunes and uh, I was just fascinated by the technique that he had and so he used this tuning all the time and even when, you, when you, and then uh, when I was you know I listened to Doc Watson and he used it, you know, in Clawhammer for, you know, he would play here, put the index finger here and play it. Now it becomes a C minor. Of course, all these old-time tunes, uh, and I have to say, in old-time music, uh, they play a lot of in key of A, which, of course, then is just a G tuning on the second fret, 
or it's in the key of D. Uh, some old time bands, you know, that's pretty much all they do. They play either in the key of A or D. I've seen or played in an old time band once up in Laurel Springs. And they said, first set A, second set D. <laughs> so they played first, you know, set, so they don't, didn't have to retune. Then in the break, they retune. And the banjo would go up to the second fret, you know, and play the C tuning. Or, uh, you know, which makes it a D chord, D double, double D then, you know. And it's easy to play with the fiddle, playing all the D tunes. Or they would play, they would tune the entire banjo up, you know, uh, to 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 double C tuning, you know, don't even use a capo, just tune the fifth string up and everything, and then just have a double D tuning. And then you have all these. These, these great tunes you know that come out of come out of C tuning and then I thought well I really like that sound so I started to play more with with, with the finger picks and you know things like this resulted played in New York and Alison Alison Brown was there as well and she came to me and she said when I think of you and you're playing I always think of C double C tuning because you have so many tunes written in double C tuning I said well yeah I guess you're right you know I I like that tuning and I I use it I use it a lot um, it gives a chance for my brother you know to play on the fifth fret with the guitar and play 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 C up there which makes the guitar sound a little higher and because the banjo is tuned down, you know, to this root, this C down here, gives the banjo sort of a lower growl, and that just sounds great together. That double C tuning and the guitar, you know, played a little higher. Yeah. So I, I wrote many tunes like Jack of the Woods. Uh, So now, uh, to get around, to, to, to find your way around on this tuning is actually fairly easy. Um, uh, because you can use this C on the second string as a drone, uh, along with that fifth string. And then when you, when you fret the first, the, fir the, the first string here, and then you can sort of if you now move up this so and then you find a low bass note that goes with that and then you have two distance and again and then one That sound pretty and then for as a for a G chord that's a little bit of a challenge now because uh, I can't play that that B so well anymore you know that B string because now for a G chord I need a B a little bit you know if I want that sound so here's that B I use it here and have a seventh here. So this is a nice, this is a nice G chord. Uh, 
And now let's look at the different chords that, that I'm using most of the time. So here's a C chord. And then I use the F chord by playing the ring finger here and the index here on the second fret. That's gotta be the F chord. And then this would be an A minor, just playing the E, C, and the A here. And now you can you can you can just think of let's say you're just playing on the on the first three strings. Let's say you this would be a C, right? But because the the, the string is tuned up one, you just have to fret it one ha, one one fret lower. So this would be a C. So now the C is here, and this would be a G chord, right? For for G. So you just have to lower this note. And then for, this would be a C chord, so you just have to lower this note. And then have the G here again. I usually just play the first and the third string. This would be a, like an E. sounds really really pretty or like Such a such a rich rich tone that, that comes out of the banjo. So what I what I then started doing is I started messing around with the fifth string in this double C tuning. And you can now let's say just tune this fifth string down to F. difficult to tune on. Especially with the headphones on. Now I have double C tuning which is D, C, G and the low C and the F on top. And now I'm just playing out of the F chord. So I'm just making this F chord I've shown you before.
notes again. But I'm using And so forth. Now, by now, you probably wonder why do I make myself, why make it so complicated? You know, you could just play out of G tuning all the time. And, and there again, you know, I think there's a great advantage of different tunings because I cannot play all the things I play on the other tunings. And it makes me find, it makes, it helps me, just, you know, it forces me to find new things. Uh, and I start making compositions for that tuning because I cannot well improvise. <laughs> Improvising is just so much harder, you know, because uh, you don't know all the, the positions and, you know, all the scales and such. But you start thinking on a musical level, you know, such as combining licks that you already know all the time. So you, you're thinking of little melodies. <laughs> So now what now we can go take this further and then uh, drop this even a half step more. Now I'm having an E here. Isn't that pretty? So I'm playing C, That's, then I may be playing an A minor, like just putting this finger down. Can you see it with all the light? Mm -hmm, nice, okay. So, and then I don't need this E here. Just try experimenting with this. I made a few claw hammer tunes like that. And actually, I didn't, of course, invent any of that. Uh, there's always people who have, you know, done this. I once played in a, um, a banjo, uh, what was it, banjo day? Banjo Academy of kind in Banjo Camp North, um, and Reed Martin was a fantastic clama banjo player, and uh, uh, he gave me one of his his CDs, um, and he, I think he used it on one of his tunes, and it sounded a little bit like. And I like the fact that now when I play the first string, and then I have the E, which is like, and then I have the C. And I go back, it sounds like a little mill. Very pretty sound. I 
forgot to mention that. That's one of the other other G's that I use. So I'm using the because it's tuned down a whole step. I, I go up and I get a D here, and then I use this this uh, on the second fret. You know this this B B string, which is now a C, and of course this becomes a D, and this gives a good G chord. get the idea and now I even went a step further um, and tuned it down another half step and now I'm I got an E flat So it's a D, a C on the second, it's a G on the third, a C on the fourth, and an E flat. So it's just right. It's right there. So technically speaking, it would be a, like a, a C ninth minor, C minor nine. This would make the ninth, you know, the D, and then this is a C minor. And then I could do similar things like just uh, I made up you know it's um, as an old time tune but I probably will use this tuning and sort of pick something and try to compose a little piece of music that has sort of this haunting uh, it come it sounds like it's coming out right out of the middle of the forest somewhere so <laughs> I think that's a lot of tunings and now as a bonus I will give you um, a tuning that Doc Watson showed me I will go back to G tuning So Doc Watson sometimes would call up, you know, and invite us up to his house. And uh, so Uwe, Joel and me would go up there and spend spend a day, you know. Uh, Rosalie would make tomato sandwiches and he would go down to the basement and get, you know, his, his banjos up. And what astounded me most was he would go down the staircase in his house and he said, I got this banjo from Oki Adams or something I want to show you. And there was a lot of guitar cases. Uh, I don't know how many, but many and just a whole pile and he would go and he would pick pick the right banjo first time it's unbelievable he knew exactly where everything was and then he maybe put it in a tuning and then play something and then hand me the banjo back and said now you do it son and uh, and then after the first time you start paying really close attention um, because you don't, you, you want to uh, not ask him, you know, you want to try to do it. <laughs> so this is one of these tunings, you know, so he would, he would take my, for instance, he did that with me at, at one occasion, he took my banjo and he always said, uh, let me see this banjo and your banjo, he always said, your banjo sounds beautiful, sounds like a pear sound. Uh, so, so he would just grab it and then he'd take this D string Put it up to E flat. Tune the B string down to B flat. 
tune the G string down to F and tune the D string down to C sharp. B. No, no, uh, uh, C, C sharp. A uh, C. Sorry, it's a C. C. Messed it up. And now you wonder what in the world. But this 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 particular tuning has a secret to it, uh, a fantastic one that you're gonna just, that, that I can show you. Now, if any one of you plays guitar, you know, happens to play guitar, you know how you tune the guitar. You go to the fifth, you know, when you start on the sixth string, you start here, and then you again, right? See here, and then would the second string would come, and you have to shift over, and the fifth string would be like the second string. So it's like a guitar tuning, starting with a C. Now, now here comes the comes the wonderful part. If you happen to play guitar, think of this as a this is a G chord, right? Now I'm missing a few strings down here, but this is like a G chord, right? And then this would be the C chord. Or like this would be the E chord with a few strings missing in the bottom. So, so is that a G chord, C chord, or like, and then F, G, E minor, E major. Do you get the idea? Here's the E, and then G. So. And he used it to play. And this tuning really. Uh, came from the idea that somebody didn't know how to tune the banjo, that's what he told me, and they just tuned it like a guitar, said okay. And then they didn't know what to do with the with the fifth string, so they just tuned it as a second string, and that was it. See, it sounds... So anyway, that's, that's like a bonus tuning, you know. I never did much with it, but uh, I just thought it was amazing uh, that, that he would come up. Now, to end this little sequence, um, there's of course countless other tunings and I have not covered all the tunings that are possible. And I think it's just great that you can also discover your own tunings. Uh, just just make one up and um, there was a, a friend of mine, is Benji Fleming. Um, many years ago, he came to visit us sometimes in North Carolina and he had a banjo. I don't even know what tuning he had his banjo in, but he wrote some beautiful music on it and he had a really like a B flat, some kind of B flat nine sort of tuning, um, which was really, really fantastic. And I, I thought it was charming because it sounded so different. It's the same instrument, but it all of a sudden had this different sort of texture to it. And that's what I like about uh, tunings. Um, now, I just take one of these tunings and just use it for an hour and just try to find things. And all of a sudden, you, it's fresh. And then when you go back to your regular G tuning that, that you know, Oh, you'd be surprised, you know, how easy everything all of a sudden is. Or you got new ideas because you came out of that other tuning. And I think it's just a great advantage. Guitarists do that too. They have that gut or they, they tune the D string down, you know, on E. Or they have, you know, a few altered uh, tunings, especially people who do slide guitars and things. But on the banjo, it's just a different level. You know, you just have so many different uh, different tunings and it's just a, a fabulous marvelous world of tuning and it helps if you have a tuner <laughs> okay i think uh, we're ready for some questions you know and, uh, no. well first of all yes i think that was that was a really excellent uh, presentation thank you very much for for that today the double c of course is a is a fan favorite of uh, mr greg Deering. um so i'll be uh, making sure that he gets to watch this and experiment with some others as well 
But um, what we'll do as well, Jens, is um, I'll make a note of all of the different tunings in order, and we'll timestamp them in the video so people can come in and just click on the, the time okay, yep. for each one, and we'll list out the, the the string names as well so we can kind of give everyone what they need. Um, oh, I talked way too long again. I, I asked you to stop me. Well, but... I mean, you know, I like listening to you talk. I think everybody likes listening to you talk. And um, really, the, the, the live stream's going on for... For two hours and so really you're you're way under time it's, it's i planned it out like that okay it's good all right be, yeah, all right we're, we're, we're only halfway through so we're, we, we mapped it out nicely um so yeah we've got a few questions to go through um real quick but the first thing that, that came up earlier in the in the live stream was from uh, gigito i think i'm pronouncing it correctly um and it's kind of more of a summary of how i think probably a lot of people feel um, which is uh, when i try different tunings i get lost i feel a part of mastering an instrument is mastering its tuning However, I feel that trying new tunings opens up a universe for new sounds. And I think probably a lot of people, people feel the same way, particularly if they haven't really kind of ventured down the road of new tunings. So what, what is your advice there just to kind of give, give newcomers to alternate tunings, um, you know, the, the confidence to go down and experiment without the fear of, of getting completely lost? Also very aware that that sun is setting pretty rapidly. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> well, the, the thing is that that uh, that's a very good point. You know, he's making. Um, uh, you feel lost. That's a, that's a very good point. I I think that's that's really part of the deal. You feel lost. You know, because you don't know where things are anymore. And actually, sometimes you're in the mood to get lost and don't know anything and just sort of experiment. Um, it's like when you go to an AM show or and you go to a booth and there's a, some some foreign instrument and you pick it up from the wall and you just see oh wow this tuning and this is everything's different and there's different kinds of strings and there's double strings and and you just try to make some sound that makes sense you know <laughs> you're trying to sort of plow you you just make just open one door just open one little thing you know that sort of and that's a uh, wonderful adventurous feeling especially if you're not trying to master anything right away, if you're just sort of experimenting and just listening, and it also helps open up the ears, you know, to what you're hearing and not just sort of uh, repeating what you already know. You know, a lot of times, let's try to get this back in tune. You know, you play banjo and then you go and you know all the things that you can do and and you know all the scales so 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 you just play and you, you know all these things and and you know that now you go into a different tuning all this is gone pretty much or just on a different level and you see once you play and you know these things you don't listen that much anymore because you, you're executing a lot of these these things now when you're a different tuning you start to listen because you start oh this was wrong this was wrong and that can be very annoying uh, to tell you the truth uh, it can be annoying if you expect a lot but if you don't expect anything really uh, you know it, it then all of a sudden the door opens you know something you, you find a new a new sound even uh, I don't know when I was much younger we would put maybe new strings on a guitar and then we wouldn't even tune them all the way up and, be, uh, and sort of just sort of mess around with the guitar you know in different kind of sort of ideas um, it's also interesting you know to to play a tune uh, now that's <laughs> very funny thing we do sometimes I have so many tunes written you know in different tunings that we sometimes you know it's muscle memory a lot of times you know then afterwards you know you you have a tune um and it's and it's really muscle memory the way you the way you play it and now i can play g tuning and i i i can just play a tune that i usually play in a different tuning and just play it and it sounds completely wrong you know it's like This is the worst, for instance, this. You remember that tune I did before? If I play this in G tuning. I know it sounds 
awful. But the thing is, you know, we sometimes do that. Uwe plays on a different fret on the guitar. Joel plays in a different key. And I play it, you know, in a different tuning. And we just play it out of muscle memory and just see what happens. Uh, just to remember how it is sometimes on stage, you know, when you when you play on stage and sometimes the sound is so bad uh, or you just can't hear yourself and you still have to perform, you know, the, the, the music well. And uh, so you you depend on just knowing what it is and not necessarily hearing it that well. And, uh, a diff you know, just if you put the, the banjo, let's say, in a completely different tuning, and then you play something like, you know, something you know, maybe like Blackberry Blossom or something, and it's in the detuning. It's Everything sounds wrong, but the fingering is perfectly right, and you play it perfectly right. If you can play it then and still have the melody in your head, I think then you're pretty well off, you know, playing it on stage in any situation. <laughs> you know, not that you have to do that, but it's a funny exercise. <laughs> I quite like that idea, actually. That actually, even the one you just played, yes, it didn't sound great, but it didn't sound terrible. Like even it was completely. You know, I know. It, see, it had see, a certain see, thing to see, it. That see, actually, see, like this. You're right. For instance, this part. Now, if I put in C tuning. Uh, But the thing is, if I can play it really perfect like this, and I'm not dependent on what I hear, I can actually, I know I can do it in any situation on any stage, you know, there's these stages that we know on festivals, I don't know, uh, uh, this year was fantastic at more office, you know, we played Hillside, and Hillside is a great stage, you know, I love the Hillside stage. But we had a few, t few years where the sound on Hillside was so unbelievable, you know, you couldn't hear anything. Or, and there's a few other festivals, you know, that, that are similar. And then you go on stage and you just, you, you use your tuner to tune because you don't even know if you're in tune or not, you know. And, uh, and you know, of course, the, the easiest solution for, for something like that would be that you use in-ear monitoring. And we also have in-ear monitoring, you know, but we never use it. Um, because I like to communicate with the people, you know, and sometimes it's just easier, you know, not having in ear. But then you depend on just, you know, <laughs> know how to play it and that's funny anyway uh. that's awesome that's awesome well uh let's see if we've got another question for you um oh let's go through a lot of praise our good friend vicky genfin saying hey Derek, happy to stumble upon this i love your alternate tunings um dudley i'm bringing out the banjo out of mouthfuls and getting back to practice so you're definitely inspiring some people out there to pick up and do some experimentation um well, i have to say i just have to say vicky uh you know is one of the finest guitarists in the yes. world and she has uh, uh she has an amazing uh technique on the guitar and she uses all kinds of tunings i think for her tabbing technique and hammering on it you know i mean she's she's just uh, unbelievable uh, she she can do things you know um, that seem don't seem to be possible i completely agree with that yeah it was very very um Wonderful to see her pop up in the chat. Uh, Kikito again asks, um, I feel like playing in a different tuning is almost relearning an instrument. It's very difficult, especially up the neck. Do you have any tips for playing up the neck in a different tuning? It doesn't specify any particular tuning, but... Uh... Well, if you if you remember what you did to the string, you can always recalculate it, you know, out of every, out of every move. Let's, for instance, you know, I, I'm a G minor tuning. <laughs> Sorry, I really messed my banjo up. <laughs> Something, close enough. So if you have a C chord here, you know you want to play C. Well, you know that this second string is now too low. Now you just have to raise it up to play C. And then G, you know G is too low. And then D. You have to think about it. 
<laughs> well, if that makes any sense. But you just can just, you know, always think the second string needs to be higher in order to, to do the same thing that you did not done before. Um, uh, so if you have Blackberry Blossom, you know, so, so if you want to play it in G, so you have to really raise up the second string. be it right mm. yeah so so um, but there again you know I, I wouldn't expect to just be it, it's not the point you know of being free in in, in my case I've played on G tuning for so many th thousands of hours that I I uh, I'm so familiar with most of the scales or all the you know most things that you can do just just in general that I'm that I can really whatever I pretty much think I can then then do but I would never expect me to be able to do that on a different tuning and that's the beauty of it because it's a different world and there again I if you don't expect anything, that's that's wonderful. You know, do little little things, these different sounds. You know that all of a sudden create this magic, and that magic then becomes part of your musical imaginative world, which also then enters in the G tuning for some magical reason. All of a sudden, you start to look for things in the G tuning you have never thought of because you found something, a little flavor, a spice, something else in a different tuning. And I think that's why when I said to you, Jamie, you know, I want to really like to do this. It's not only about discovering different tunings. It's really discovering tastes. You know that you can also yeah. then bring into G tuning. You know. Yeah, and you you've touched on that before. This idea of like using different ingredients, right, to create a dish, and maybe you try using a different, you know, a bit more of a different spice here and there, or a different, you know, a bit more of a different ingredient. Yes, and that's exactly. kind of what you, that's kind of what you're doing. I've, you've spoken about that many times, and it's yes. It's, yeah. the best way to look at it uh vicky i think she's bragging at this point she says i have about 35 tunings which is crazy but i think you've just armed her with about another seven or so that she can experiment with on uh, <laughs> on her own which is really cool um <laughs> but yeah no that was fantastic the the other question that came up real quick um was jim newton right at the top of the show any recommendations for best chord books and i got to thinking I mean, chord books is a good one for chords, but it's still going to be in a probably in like a G tuning. It wouldn't necessarily help. I couldn't find any like alternate tunings books out there. Do you have any recommendations for uh, anything like that? Well, I wouldn't know. I'm sorry that that I have to disappoint you with that. I I don't have an answer for that. The only thing that come pops up, you know, in my head right now would be um, that if you buy a plectrum banjo chord book uh, you know and and there's the, you know a regular plectrum banjo is like the c tuning yeah. that would be like plectrum banjo's standard tuning and if you buy a chord book for plectrum banjo that pretty much covers all the chords you know that that, that you need for this for this tuning yeah. i don't know if there's a chord book for double c or g minor or um uh I'm sure if you got into, I mean, double C is obviously very popular with Clawhammer guys as well. So if there was a Clawhammer chord book or, or something of that nature that looked down that road. Yeah, but I, I, would, I wouldn't know it. Uh, you know, you might yeah. find it, you know. Uh, There's a number of books on the DearingBanjos.com. I have to plug that, including a chord chart, which is really useful. But again, yes. I think it's, it might only take you through standard tuning as opposed to going through all the different tunings. Yes. So but really, this video. <laughs> but there again, you know, when you know what you did to the, to the, to the string... You can just take a chord, you know, and sort of recalculate what you've done, you know, just sort of, you know, this is a major seven, you know, G major seven, you know, and if you have changed the string, yeah, you just have to sort of, you know, adjust this, that changed string, you know, or yep. find an octave, you know, in the lower, in the lower, in the lower chord, you know, in a lower string, if you can't reach it anymore, like in C tuning, you know, you couldn't play this, you know, yeah. to compensate. You know, but how, but but then how many you tunings do you use on stage, Jens? Well, I, I I haven't covered all the tunings that I use. You know, I uh, I use pretty much G tuning. I use a double C tuning, mm -hmm. and then I use both of these tunings tuned down a whole step. Okay. So 
I what what I do a lot of times I tune the entire banjo down a whole step to F, and and uh, and it's because Uwe sings well in F, and the banjo sounds really beautiful tuned down to F, and then when I play double C, in tuned down it becomes double B flat, and that's where I play uh, Fields of Gold or um, uh, Forever in the Day the plan you know some of some of these tunes and an f i would play um carolina in the fall um uh, i'd play uh don't think twice you know and i can play pretty much just bluegrass tuned the whole banjo tune down a whole step and it sounds really good because we're playing in a trio situation or with a drum and the banjo then all of a sudden has this low feeling you know this lower sort of sound um, that, that sounds kind of that sounds, baritone, -y, doesn't it? Almost. Yeah, it gives sort of yeah. more of a of a growl to it, and I, I mm -hmm. think uh, um, if I'm in a stress situation, you know, where I don't have time to tune on stage, I take a second banjo with me, you mm -hmm. know, that I that I that I tune that I tune down. But in general, uh, I just go ahead, you know, and and just tune the banjo down, you know, to to F. Mm -hmm. So these are the four tunings. Uh, I mean, five. It's it's, it's G. Uh, uh, four tunings, the G and the double C I use, and then I use, you know, tune the whole thing down. So pretty much two systems that I That's use, awesome. the, the, the G system and the double C system, which really covers almost everything that I need to cover, you know, from tuning. There you go. There you go. You heard it all here first. So, Mr. Kruger, thank you so much for your time. We've, we've gone... Uh... We've got an hour and fifteen. It's, it goes quick, doesn't it? When you get, I know, into, uh... I know. It's, I, I just, well, you know, I just hope that that you, you know, you're out there, get encouraged, you know, just to experiment. Yeah. Don't be too hard on yourself, you know. I just if you if you get into a new tuning, let's say you just something like that, and then you just sort of. And then you just try to play an old. You see, that's a sound you don't get out of G, G tuning. Because you don't have that A and that B flat, you know, sort of right beside it. If you don't expect much if you don't want to you know if you just find little things i always this describe it like that when you were a kid and i don't know if you ever moved to a city uh, when you're a kid and you move to a city or to a new neighborhood you don't walk for two miles you know you just you get out the house and you walk down the street and you maybe take a turn then you walk back and you start making circles, sort of, you know, you start to discover things. And all of a sudden you see, oh, here the woods start here. Let's walk into the woods for a while and see where it goes. And then you try to always find back. And it's sort of, you start mapping things out just by exploring it. And I think that's exactly the way I, I like to explore music. Uh, uh, and you don't have to understand it in a sense. It's just a flavor. It's just a, not understand it on a theoretical level. Uh, I, I, th I think that always can come later you know don't overthink it on an intellectual base it's it's the sort of you know going somewhere new that that's all there is you know for me it's the perfect analogy it really is yeah take it easy experiment enjoy yourself find stuff discover stuff on your own and uh you know you'll get and you'll find something that works for you as well i'm sure yeah so. yeah i mean i i sometimes just make obscure tunings you know that just don't make any sense you know i mean just things that just let me just go. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden you find something that you might like, and, and that's and that's all. And then you go back do something else you know but i think double c tuning is uh, an underestimated tuning uh, and it's very it's very very useful you know it's it's one of the great yeah. tunings in banjo you know that has not been overly used 
Yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't realize you used it as much as you as you do. Uh, I didn't realize that the, some of those songs that you said uh, were in double C. So that's that's really cool uh, to hear it played in that context, you know, with yes. speaking style. That's, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, write emails, you know, and ask in what what is the tuning for Forever in the Day, for instance, you know, and uh, because it's one of our songs that's been really covered a lot, you know, by by people, and they always ask what it is, and I say, well, it's just the double C tuning, you know, tune the whole step down, so it becomes a double B flat tuning, and and it it's just it really sounds, I mean, it sounds great, it isn't. Right. Yeah. So so I think one thing is the one thing is the the kind of notes you play, but I think in the end, what really transports the music is how you feel when you play it, you know, the way you want to get it out. <laughs> you know, that's sort of that urge to get that sound. Yeah, then, then all of a sudden there's a magic sort of happening. <laughs> 100%. Well, while we've been talking, I will say that uh, our, our man, Stefan, I think that's how you pronounce the name, um, has found a uh, book about tunings, different banjo tunings. Mel Bay Publishing has one, and it looks like it's called Alternate Tunings for Five String Banjo Play Bluegrass Style. Oh, that's so, that's that's very helpful. Thank yes. you, Stefan. Stefan Hoogley. I, I know Stefan, you know, he's, he's, he's really, he's a really good man, good banjo player. Very so good. Well, he was just our little uh, undercover detective finding out things that I couldn't find. Yeah, so thank that's you. great. Thank good you, to Stephen. hear you. And we'll <laughs> put the, uh, we'll put the link for that in the, um, in the, in the description of the video as well for you guys to check out. Uh, <laughs> All right. Things. So well, yes, I... before we leave, um, you're on, you have your live stream tomorrow. Is that correct? Tell yes, yes, yeah. Tomorrow we're going to have the live stream again. You know, um, uh, Jody can't be with us, but Joel is going to be there. So we're going to play a few of my compositions, like "Lady with Parasol" and all that stuff. So uh, we're really looking forward to 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 play with Joel. You know, and then next week Jody's going to be with us again. And uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. We st we want to continue with the with the live streams and our booking agency. You know, is really moving forward. You know, booking a lot of shows this year again. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and that's on the Kruger Brothers YouTube channel, correct? Uh, uh, yes, actually, yeah, it's, uh, you can you can see our uh, our live stream uh, on our Facebook or on the on on YouTube. You know, you can go to our channel or you can just find it on YouTube. It's live. It's always uh, uh, Eastern uh, seven o'clock in the evening, between seven and eight, we go live and we just have a lot of fun and play. Perfect. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks when you're out here in uh, sunny California. Yes, absolutely. I can't wait. Can't wait. To, can't wait to see the company and uh, go to Nam show. And yep, it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun time. We'll see you then. Um, all I have to say is uh, during live, the masterclasses are all up on the website. But the during live episodes, we had Trey Wellington on last week talking about his new album. We have Dan Walsh on next Thursday, which would be a really cool one as well. Yes. For, uh, for those of you that want to get into some kind of Middle Eastern claw hammer and and uh, Scottish and Irish jigs and reels and that kind of thing. It's um, it's a lot of fun with Dan. So, but in the meantime, definitely encourage you to check out all of the uh, the Jens Kruger masterclasses. They are a delight. Yes, <laughs> thank you. you well, as always. Thanks. And I I want to I want to thank you and I want to thank you all. You know for watching and uh, uh, bearing with me. <laughs> you know, my, it's, a, it's a pleasure. <laughs> you all it's, take it's care. It's already Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> you all take all right. care. Good luck to you. You take care. All right, have fun, okay. guys. Thanks again okay. for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.